I'm Dr. Sujal Mandavia, Chief Medical Officer at Carbon Health. At Carbon Health, we've done over 500,000 COVID tests so far in the pandemic. And I know a lot of our patients and partners have many questions about tests. They typically fall into three categories. What kind of tests are available? What are the key differences in those? And when should I get tested? So let's break that down. First, let's talk about the type of tests that are available on the market today. Those really fall into three broad categories. The first would be PCR tests, which are molecular tests. Second would be antigen tests. And thirdly, we can talk about antibody tests. First, let's talk about PCR testing. So PCR testing or molecular testing is a method where we can test for actual genetic material in a sample and look for specific nucleotides or basically a fingerprint that will allow us to identify if a genetic code is present in that sample. In the setting of COVID-19 testing, that means that we're taking actual RNA sequences from the COVID-19 virus and looking specifically for those. And during the test process, we amplify that genetic material and signal so we can detect very low levels of the genetic material in the sample and determine if it's present and determine if that test result is a positive or a negative. Next, let's talk about antigen testing. So antigen testing is really looking for the actual viral protein or casing of the virus and determining whether or not an active infection is present based on the presence of that protein. So because it doesn't include any amplification step in its methodology, it's at a little bit of a disadvantage compared to molecular or PCR testing, which means that it may not be as sensitive in picking up early or lower levels of infection compared with a PCR test. The third category of tests are antibody tests. These are tests that are done from a blood sample, and you could consider these the rear view mirror of testing in COVID-19. What I mean by that is that they're really not accurate or representative of whether somebody has an active infection and may be a transmission risk or a contagion risk, but more effective in determining whether your body's immune system has seen that virus before and has mounted a response that we can actually measure in your blood. One of the common questions I get is, why is PCR testing so expensive? Well, there's a number of reasons for that, and, and let's break those down. Number one, PCR tests use reagents, multiple reagents in the lab process that are expensive. Number two, PCR testing is typically done in a central lab with very large, expensive lab machines that in effect raises the cost of each test run. Number three, there's also highly skilled labor that's required to both collect samples and also to run those tests in the lab. Let's talk about when to get COVID-19 testing. That really falls into a few scenarios. Let's talk about the first one. First scenario is, I've got symptoms. If you have symptoms and you're worried they may be from COVID-19, that's a clear indication to go get COVID-19 testing done. Second scenario we'll talk about is exposure. If you've had an exposure to somebody who you know has a positive COVID-19 test, then you should get tested. However, let's wait five to seven days after the exposure to get that testing done. Why? Because if you get tested earlier, the test may not detect that infection because it actually takes a few days for the viral level to reach a point where it's detectable on the test. And I really don't want you to get a false sense of security from an early test. Let's talk about exposures where you don't know. So what I mean by that is that there can be scenarios, whether it's because you're traveling, you're going through an airport, you're on an airplane, you're on a subway, where you may be in a crowded situation and unknowingly be exposed. That's another indication, but I would again treat it the same way. From the time of when you think you might have been exposed, let's get that test done, but let's wait five to seven days. Early in the pandemic, there were very few options available for testing and supply was scarce. Luckily, at this point, 
supply is starting to open up and there are actually new options coming onto the market. In fact, some have been approved, but have not yet appeared on the market, but they show a lot of promise in giving us much more ubiquitous and distributed access to testing. Some of these include antigen testing that you can run at home, similar to a pregnancy test, and some of them are even PCR based that you can actually complete the test at home and get your result within about 30 minutes. I anticipate there will be many more options for testing within the coming months. And at Carbon Health, we think it's our role to help you sift through those and understand which tests would be the best for your application and certainly make sure that we're getting awareness of how these tests are actually performing in the real world so that you can make smart decisions. Since the early days of the pandemic, I think that a lot of us have been forced to become amateur epidemiologists, but I still get a lot of questions about false negative test results and false positive test results, and what does that mean for my result? False negative results really refer to the ability of a test to detect that disease and relate to the sensitivity of the test. Let me explain that further. If a test is supposed to be 95% sensitive at detecting the disease, we'd actually expect that 5% of the time, we're gonna have somebody who actually has that disease, i.e. COVID-19, but yet we're not gonna pick it up on the test. It will give us a negative result. Those are false negative results, and certainly those are ones we're very cautious about because that can increase a risk of infection or transmission because we might think that that person's status is COVID negative. Next, let's talk about false positives. So they're kind of the mirror opposite and false positives really relate to the specificity performance of a test. What I mean by that is that if a test is say 98% specific, then 2% of the time or two tests out of 100, I'm going to expect that that positive result I got actually does not reflect that patient having COVID-19. So that has its own implications in that a positive result, of course, is going to mean that that person's gonna get isolated. There may be contact tracing and others around them that might be isolated unnecessarily. 